I mean, that, that's that's a fair point, Jessica. Like we're all, um, like we we're all we we all have our own personal philosophies and what have you. But the fact of the matter is, we all every almost every single person that uses a computer, every single person that uses a computer has benefited from the open source uh, and free software movement, undoubtedly. Right? You get Linux on your phones, on your watches, on your computers, on your TVs. It's everywhere. And if we didn't have the free software movement, the operating systems that are implemented on all of these devices, your sat navs, your TVs, all this stuff, they could very well end up being A, significantly more expensive uh, because proprietary licenses would then have to be handed out, more bureaucratic, less secure, um, and it would hinder development of the tools on top of that. Um, and, and, you know, that's not even mentioning the the shady stuff that companies could could get up to and that's not saying that companies don't do a heck of a lot of shady stuff these days even even on top of like the the open source stuff like you take the linux kernel yes all right so you, you could put that on android google of course do a bunch of shady stuff on top of that as well but you know more can be done uh you know you're you're a greater disadvantage without the free software components in it. So it's a matter of like, not everything has to be always free all the time, 10 times out of 10, at least in my personal opinion, but to support free software whenever possible, to make it the norm and to use it, I think is like really important because then it allows wider society to sort of progress on a much more efficient footing and on a much more um, ethical from a software point of view footing because uh, what we don't want is to go back to the 90s where Microsoft were handing out licenses to schools, getting everyone hooked on, on Microsoft products and then clawing their, their monopoly into the desktop uh, ecosystem so thoroughly that um, they were just making a lot of money by hindering technological development. And that's fundamentally what it comes down comes down to. Um, and yeah, like, you know... Um, <laughs> And it's, you know, the thing is, is that like, we, you know, we talk like we, we can talk about like Linux going mainstream, for example, uh, Linux going mainstream will always be a mixed blessing, right? You, you know, because what does Linux going mainstream look like? Well, it looks like Android, it looks like Chrome OS, and those are just two right off the bat. What does BSDs, for example, going mainstream look like? Well, it might look like Apple. And Apple to me is the is the is the worst of the bunch, because I cannot stand closed systems that's just to me no fun whatsoever it's like fisher price computers is what apple apple is to me sure you know if if you're a an, a, an elderly person and you just want to keep in touch with the grandkids with an easy system then by all means pick up an apple i guess um, and there's plenty of free software powering it so um or, or, or playstation actually last name first name yeah bsd go mainstream is like playstation which is you know like playstation benefits from the free software movement in that capacity as well so you know it's it, it's good like free software has has done a lot for the world it's it's done good um and of course linux paul does have the good point google is is now getting their monopoly into schools using the exact same strategy that microsoft did so um but at least it's it's a it's a linux like system at least it's a compatible kernel at least they're they're contributing back to free software in some capacity, even if we have a new, more insidious enemy uh, in the midst. I, I don't really want to say Google's an, an enemy per se, but it's certainly something that um, is a is a monopoly that should be challenged. All monopolies should be challenged, and, and fundamentally speaking, it's a problem of of just having businesses run such important infrastructure in general. Uh, because the thing is, you can support your small business outside of Google, and that's all well and good. But a big company could easily buy out the small outsider and the small outsider then becomes absorbed into everything that you were initially fighting against. Um, or it could very well be the fact that the small outsider gains the critical mass and the momentum to overtake the conventional big tech and then becomes the enemy that it was originally selling itself against. So the fact of the matter is the core of the, the free software movement um, will probably, for the most part, always be an outside one, but also influential and important. So, I don't know, take that for what it's worth. That's just my two cents, anyway. Um, FOSS allows non-FOSS companies to be uh, to be lazy. Um, 
uh, kind of. Uh, I, w I mean, it's much more efficient because the fact of the matter is, companies are lazy. They'll they'll do the least amount of work for the most amount of money, right? So how so what they'll be doing is if if there were no FOSS kernels, for example, uh, there will be bodged together proprietary kernels that will be closed. So we'll have no idea how insecure they are, and they'll differ from machine to machine, making compatibility an infinitely more difficult task in any capacity. Um, and it will just it will just be building a, a, a digital house of cards because every company will have their own kernel. It will not, not be as maintained, uh, not be as well maintained as any of the other kernels um, that, that are in existence today. And that's the benefit. Like the fact of the matter is, um, we kernels are difficult to make. They require a great deal of expertise, and to be fair, a lot of different people with lots of differing. Uh, specialist areas in software development it's a massive field of course so um, so basically what you got to do is you got to find out where companies can be lazy and take advantage of it and I think that's what the free software's done you know so all in all you know like I, do, I don't suspect the the freer of the Linux the free software sector of the Linux population uh, and the Linux community will necessarily become the norm it may do i could be wrong but that's not to say that it isn't incredibly important doesn't do a hell of a lot of good stuff uh isn't pivotal in a great number of uh in, of, of factors it's just you know it's it's just uh it's just it's just you know a part of the way that the complex world is it pans out like we should have uh ideological purists in in the community because they are a an influence that is is at least is beneficial to have maybe you don't agree with them 10 times out of 10 but they're always worth listening to because they're the ultimate destination of of what you're pulling towards um in, in a lot of ways uh, not necessarily i mean there will always be pulling factors in different directions but the fact of the matter is if if all of the world ended up using Triskel or Gnusense or Probola as as you know as as, as an extreme case scenario. It's, it's 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 not a bad you know extreme case scenario, and the, you know the world could adapt to that in a much better way. So. Yes, yes. It's uh, when did when did I start? Well, when I started Linux, it was nineteen ninety seven, and. There wasn't a Linux community because I, I, my internet was much more restricted. But, um, but uh, I think I started sort of looking into the Linux community. I think two thousand six uh, ish. Uh, Drew, Drew, I am a liar. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. All right, no one talk about Linux. I'll ban anyone who talks about Linux from now on. Okay, good. Off topic. Anyway, so, oh, <laughs> they've got a Manjaro. No, 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 no. Manjaro is not for free software. Uh, if you if you pass if you if you want to have a, anything close to a free software system, you've got to stay away from Manjaro. Um, Windows is not great. No one in the world thinks that Windows is great. Not even Windows users think Windows is great. They put up with Windows. They put up with Windows because it's it's what the crowd uses. It's Simple as that. It's like no one enjoys Facebook, but uh, like everyone's on it because it's, it's where the herd is. It's where the crowd is. So I know there are Windows fans, right? And they are worse than any other like fans ever of anything in the digital space. Like it's fucking maddening. It really is. Like it really, really is. It's mad. It's it's. it's bonkers it really is yeah no i've had a couple of them. not very many there's very few of them i think I'm, i could probably count on one hand all of them i'm not on facebook either last name first name and for, don't follow me on twitter only idiots follow me on twitter i use twitter for work um unfortunately that is one area where i've had to bend and also by the way like um <laughs> no hang on a minute hang on a minute hang on a minute the old school ms paint they should open source that I think I think Windows fanboys. Um, I I I don't know. Like they're bizarre. Um, I can't even remember them to be honest. The last time I came across one was was a while back. But like I mean, take for example Manjaro and Mint. They are specifically Mint have said that they like free software, but they're not in the um, 
they're not going to ever like let it hinder them in terms of functionality. So if they if they can only do something with uh, with non free software, they'll go ahead and do it with non free software. But all the tools that Mint develop, they open source, which is which is fair. I think Manjaro is the distribution that um, that takes the um, we we don't care. I don't know. Is it fair to say they don't care about non free? Like they don't. It's it's much less of a factor to them. So you know, for example, you can install. Is it free Office uh, on install with with Manjaro now? That's not an open source uh, Office, but if it's better than LibreOffice, I don't personally, I don't know. Like I personally don't have a problem with LibreOffice, but um, I, I'll answer your question as a second route. But like, um, with, yeah, like with free Office. I mean, if it's a really good Office suite, I don't know. Then you know maybe one distribution should be the one that does it maybe maybe there's an argument to to say well okay we'll put in the the best for for you know like the the best i mean it's, you know they'll put in the best product the products that they see as best and they'll disregard what the license is as long as they can distribute redistribute it but i don't know it, i mean it's it's interesting in manjaro in, in my opinion i know the opinions divided on manjaro with, with different experiences that um that um but I think it's pretty good, but some people uh, obviously disagree. Uh, Drew, Drew says the problem with being fully free, um, fully free open is where do you draw the line? Drivers, firmware, microcode. Um, I mean, that's 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 like a question for everyone, isn't it? Because, I mean, if you wanted to be one hundred percent fully free, you'd need to buy the hardware specifically for it. And I think you start going into. I mean, one of the things that brought me on board with the free software movement, and I think this is this is much more important than it's ever given credit for, is that it allows people who don't have that much money to get in, in on board with with computers in this you know this digital community, which um, which makes it more inclusive in a very important and meaningful way. So, um, so I don't. This is why I'm against absolutism in that free software way. I am of the mind of be as free software as possible and it's up to you to, to, to work out where the sacrifices are because if you were to go super free software you are going to be making sacrifices um, but it's up to you as to how I don't want to say like I don't want to say like it's like how dedicated you are to free software because that's not really a fair way of looking at it different people have different needs and it's an incredibly complex field um, and some different people have different time to learn different things and commitments and you know some people want to keep up with the grandkids and they use Skype and all that kind of stuff so you know it's 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 an incredibly complex field you can never have one size fits all in terms of, of how it works but my personal guiding rule is like even if it means making some sacrifices I think they're worth it because free software doesn't get better without community involvement so that's uh, that's that's just my take on it anyway. Um, but there is no line to be drawn. It's it's all shades of grey. So 